New York State Racing Permits Wagering and Breeding Law Section 102 provides that the New York State Gaming Commission shall consist of seven members appointed by the governor by and with the advice and consent of the Senate. Six members having been confirmed by the New York State Senate affords the commission an ability to establish an, a quorum and undertake action. This present meeting of the commission is now called to order. Ms. Secretary, will you please call the roll? John Crowdy? Here. Mark Aaron? Here. Peter Machetti? Here. John Paclemba? Here. Barry Sample? Here. Todd Snyder? Here. Ms. Secretary, will you please have the record reflect that a quorum of qualified members are present, thus enabling the transaction of business. Mr. Chairman? Thank you, Rob. Uh, We'll start with the consideration of minutes from our uh, meeting, November 24th. Minutes of the commission meeting uh, conducted on November 24th, 2014 have been provided to members uh, in advance. And so at this time I'd ask if members if there are any edits, corrections, or amendments. Okay, hearing none, Madam Secretary, please let the record reflect that the minutes were adopted. Next on our uh, agenda is the report from the Executive Director. Rob. Thank you. As you are all likely aware, the Gaming Facility Location Board issued its recommendations following the review of responses to their request for application to develop and operate a gaming facility in New York State. The board selected Montrain Operating Company, LLC, proposer of Montrain Resort Casino in the town of Thompson in Sullivan County, Capital Region Gaming, LLC, proposer of Rivers Casino and Resort at Mohawk Harbor, in the city of Schenectady, in Schenectady County, and Lago Resort and Casino, LLC, the proposer of Lago Resort and Casino in the town of Tyre in Seneca County. Last Wednesday, the board only released a summary selection document. They indicated that a comprehensive report would be released on or about 30 days from the issuance of that summary document. Commission staff, however, is not waiting for the delivery of the final report to move forward in the process. The New York State Police were statutorily designated as the entity required to undertake the initial background investigations of the licensed applicants. And while the State Police have been engaged in preliminary work on each applicant since July, they will now return to their work and finalize their product on each company and each principal and management employee of the recommended entities. Late last week, Commission staff commenced review of all materials received from the three recommended applicants to verify that the State Police have every application and document necessary for their background finalization. Completion of the State Police tasks will be dependent upon the complexity of the materials requiring review. The Commission will also, in early next year, be considering a rulemaking that will establish the manner by which the new casinos, commercial casino industry will operate. Staff has already commenced consideration of rules that will require prompt consideration, such as facility and occupational licensing. As has been previously mentioned, the concept is to divide the rules into sections that will enable the Commission to establish interested party work groups. This will enable us to obtain greater public involvement in, on the direction and content of the rulemaking, enabling a better work product. We've publicly, publicly mentioned work groups for problem gambling and for accessibility. Other work groups will be established as staff identifies logical themes. Both legal staff and the Division of Gaming have commenced development of a rule outline and have undertaken research on various jurisdictions approach to gaming regulation. It is likely at the January meeting we will see our initial uh, rulemaking proposals or structure for the upcoming uh, rules themselves. Well, uh, in SECRA, you're all aware that the Commission is an interested party in each of the SECRA reviews undertaken by the casino license applicants. As an involved agency, the Commission must review the environmental impacts, the final environmental impact statements for each of the selected applicants and either adopt the findings of the SECRA lead agency, which has usually been the town where the gaming facility site is located, and or provide a summary of our own findings. The seeker process is completed once the lead agency and all involved agencies have adopted or provided their own findings based on the final environmental impact statements. Staff has already engaged personnel from the Department of Environmental Conservation 
and we'll tomorrow have a conversation that will lead to a fuller understanding of our duties and responsibilities under Seeker. Once we have a better understanding, we will provide a memo uh, outlining the expected scope of the Commission's work. Finally, the Commission staff has a tremendous amount of materials that were submitted in both the RFA uh, process or created in the Gaming Facility Location Board review. Please let me know if there's any materials that you would like in advance for your own review as we go down this process. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams, and thank you and your staff for all the hard work as well as to the members of the Gaming Facilities Location uh, Board for, for all of their efforts. Um, we next turn to uh, rulemaking on our agenda, New York State Racing Paramutual Wagering and Breeding Law 104. Point one nine authorizes the Commission to promulgate rules and regulations that it deems necessary to carry out its responsibilities. To that regard, the Commission will from time to time promulgate rules and rule amendments pursuant to the State Administrative Procedure Act. And today, we have 12 rulemaking items uh, for consideration. And Mr. Williams will outline the proposals. The first item, 4A, is relative to emergency and proposed rulemakings concerning the Jockey Injury Compensation Fund. This has become moot over this weekend due to the filing of an acceptable 2015 plan. Items 4B through 4L all regard harness racing. In November 2013, the Commission proposed a variety of rules designed to protect the integrity of the paramutual wagering system and the health and safety of standard bred horses engaged therein. Specifically, the Commission has considered amending its existing rules to create regulatory thresholds for 16 to perhaps as many as 24 drugs that have widely accepted beneficial effects and can be effectively regulated by means of laboratory thresholds. The adoption of some or all of these same thresholds is occurring at other racing commissions throughout the nation. Other proposed amendments related to the Commission's rules restricting the time period after various drug treatments before a horse may participate in a race and rules relative to specific drug utilization. These proposals are necessary to harmonize the rules which forewarn a trainer when to stop using each particular drug with the new thresholds. The proposed rules were the subject of a public hearing conducted January 21, 2014. Information received at the hearing resulted in reconsideration of the rules relative to the regulation of corticosteroids and clombuterol in standard bred racing. The Commission had divided its corticosteroid rulemaking initially into three separate proposals, and Commission staff now recommends the adoption of one of these proposals. The Commission also revised its clombuterol rulemaking for standard bred racing at the Commission meeting conducted March 12, 2014. The revisions will permit the appropriate use of clombuterol to treat bronchial disorders of standard bred horses without unnecessarily forcing a treated horse to miss weekly racing opportunities while protecting the sport from the long-term misuse of the drug for anabolic or muscle building effects. These revisions have been given the unqualified public support by the Standard Bred Horsemen's Organization at Yonkers Raceway. Overall, it is important to note that the centerpiece of the Standard Bred rules the adoption of 19 thresholds for medications that are routinely used during a standard bred horse's weekly racing schedule has not changed since the initial proposal in November of 2013. Commission staff saw industry and general public input on the proposed rules no less than four times. Pre-proposal, initial proposal, public hearing, and revised proposal. Substantive comments from leading standard bred organizations, research scientists, and practicing veterinarians were received regarding standard bred rule proposals. All were generally supportive of the drug testing changes, as revised, that are recommended today. As a result of the hearing, the Commission may make fact findings in regard to rulemaking proposals. Staff strongly recommends that this action be given as the rules present the first major new regulatory approach in New York equine drug testing since the New York State Racing and Wagering Board adopted restricted time periods in 1982 and thus are likely to be challenged, much as the restricted time periods were challenged back in 1982. 
Findings of fact provide the best opportunity to ensure that there is a clear and concise record of the agency's actions regarding the scientific consultant's analyses and considerations in establishing these new rules. If made, such findings of fact would constitute resolved facts for all relative adjudicatory proceedings before the Commission. Staff has prepared for consideration a memorandum identifying 14 agency findings for five rule proposals. Staff recommends adopting of all the referenced proposed rulemakings and the 14 findings of fact. Staff also recommends that three proposed rules, two inappropriate cortico steroid proposals, and the nationally abandoned zero threshold for other medic medications be withdrawn given the rulemaking proposals before the Commission. Today we have with us State Equine Medical Director Scott Palmer. Dr. Palmer would like to briefly address the science that underlies the proposals. Additionally, on the telephone, we have the Director of Racing, Ron o Okram, and Assistant Counsel Rick Goodell, who is, specializes in this uh, rulemaking. Collectively, they should be able to answer any specific questions relative to the rules that you have before you for adoption. Dr. Palmer? Thank you, Rob. I did participate in the uh, rulemaking hearings in January and have reviewed all the written submissions and public comments in order to prepare the agency's specific fact findings with regard to the key issues. One, whether ad adapting thresholds is consistent with the agency's regulatory approach. Number two, whether these thresholds are consistent with our other rules. Number three, whether we have proposed appropriate adjustments to our restricted time periods to accommodate adopting the national thresholds. Uh, Dr. George Malin, longtime director of the New York State Drug Testing Research Laboratory, has also reviewed these findings and the draft, uh, and the, reviewed these issues and the draft findings. We both are sure that these findings represent the, no, the, uh, the knowledge of the industry, having had input, the institutional knowledge of the commission, and that these findings are accurate and sufficient as set forth for the commission fact finding for adopting these proposed rules. I personally support this approach to regulating medication and harness racing. And it's my own professional opinion that adoption of these rules is of critical importance to New York State horse racing. Adoption of these rules will position New York as a leader in, the con in concert with our neighboring mid-Atlantic states in establishing uniform medication rules for standard bred horse racing throughout North America. These harness rule proposals are substantially the same as the thoroughbred rules adopted by the Commission in November. The harness rule proposals differ from the recently adopted thoroughbred rules only with regard to regulation of clenbuterol and intraarticular and, and corticosteroids. These differences reflect the Commission's efforts to address unique differences in which these two breeds are trained and raced. The harness clenbuterol regulation will accomplish the same goal as that of the thoroughbred rule, which is to regulate the off-label use of clenbuterol as an anabolic or repartitioning agent while still permitting its use to treat respiratory conditions under the direct supervision of a veterinarian. This has been accomplished by adding additional language to require direct supervision of a veterinarian and limiting the duration of treatment to that appropriate for the management of respiratory conditions that is about approximately a two-week limitation for daily treatment. The third bred corticosteroid rules were proposed in one package because there was strong nationwide consensus for adoption of these rules in a uniform and timely fashion. And there was a priority to reduce the use of intraarticular corticosteroids, particularly methylprednisolone, in order to help reduce the number of catastrophic injuries in thoroughbred racehorses. There is no similar there is no similar industry strong consensus or sense of urgency on the part of the standard bred industry, since the risk of catastrophic musculoskeletal injury in standard bred racehorses is a small fraction of that in thoroughbred horses. The Racing Medication Testing Consortium position statement on corticosteroids states that. Though needless degeneration of joints aided by injudicious use of corticosteroids is a long-term concern with the use of corticosteroids, it is the masking of the potential for catastrophic injury by the presence of pharmacologic concentrations of corticosteroids sufficient to hide early anatomic disruption that is of most concern. This is less of a concern with standard bred horses because they do not experience the same degree of fatal musculoskeletal injury as do the third bred horses. The Commission staff is recommending adoption of only one of the three harness corticosteroid proposals at this time. The strict regulation of methylprednisolone in standard bred racehorses is proposed for adoption at this meeting for the same reasons as were cited for the adoption of third bred methylprednisolone regulations in November. In November, the Commission approved recommendations for strict regulation of betamethasone and triamcinolone in thoroughbreds 
after the Commission used an ESAL program, that's the Equine Steroid Administration Log, to gather data on the use of these medications. A similar approach is recommended for regulation of these drugs in standard bred racehorses. This is the reason for proposing the ESAL reporting of corticosteroid regulations in standard bred horses at this meeting. This process will then give the Commission the opportunity to study the use of these corticosteroids in standard bred horses before making a final recommendation. Because adoption of these rulemaking proposals represent a significant change in our approach to regulating certain classes of medication, it's important for the Commission to set a date for adoption that provides ample opportunity for licensees to prepare for these rule changes and take steps to comply with them. We recommend that these rules be adopted and take effect on April 1, 2015. We will announce these changes and provide guidance to horsemen and veterinarians on the Commission website in the same manner as we did for the recently adopted thoroughbred rules. Since the last Commission meeting, we have used email broadcasts to inform licensees of these rule changes. And we anticipate the use of social media to further expand our communication and education efforts in the near future. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Doctor. Any questions for Obama or Ron or Rick or also on the phone? Any discussion? Or Add materials in advance. But. We're, uh, are we adopting the, the findings as well? Is that what's being asked of us? At, at this moment, right now, it's just a. Uh, it, there's nothing in front of you, but I believe the chairman will be asking for a motion to adopt the rules B through I. The findings is a separate motion that he would be asking for today. Today. Correct. And, and, and I, I thought I heard you say that you concurred with and were confident in the uh, the scope of the findings? Is yes. that right, Doctor? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, um, I would entertain then a motion to adopt the rules listed as items 4B through 4I, per se regulatory standard red thresholds for equine drugs, per se regulatory standard bred threshold and restricted time period for flu nixon, per se regulatory standard bred threshold and restricted time period for DMSO, restricted time period for standard bred ferronixin use, restricted time periods for clenbuterol use on standard bred horses, restrictions on the use of clenbuterol in standard bred racing, Reporting of standard bred corticosteroid joint injections to the Commission. In limiting the use of the corticosteroid methylprednisolone acetate in standard bred racing. Those uh, various rules 4B through 4I for a motion uh, for adoption. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Next, uh, are there any questions on the proposed findings of fact? Here. So I would entertain a motion then to adopt the 14 agency findings of fact findings, as fact findings. So moved. Do I have a second? Sure. Great. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. As Rob indicated then, I may I have a motion to withdraw the three previously proposed rules, two of which were relative to the standards and restricted time periods for certain corticosteroid injections, and the third of which regarded corticosteroid detection thresholds. thresholds. These rules are listed as items 4J through 4L in your materials. And that is, per se regulatory standard bred threshold and restricted time period for betamethasone and triamacinolone and acetonide. The second one, per se regulatory standard bred threshold and restricted time period for dexamethasone and prednisolone. And thirdly, per se regulatory standard bred threshold limited to 24 drugs, special corticosteroid rules. Do I have a motion? This is a withdrawal. Yeah, this is a withdrawal. Yes. yes. This is a withdrawal. Yes. Second. Second. Discussion on the motion? 
All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Next is uh, proposed rulemaking. Uh, Mr. Williams, you could discuss the next item on our agenda. Certainly. Item 4M is a new rule proposal that would require specific minimum penalties for multiple medication violations. The new rules are designed to ensure that every state imposes a mandatory minimum penalty whenever a horse person, typically the trainer, reaches a certain level of multiple equine drug violations. At the heart of the proposal is the assignment of a specific number of points for each type of drug violation along with a minimum mandatory license suspension based on the accumulation of such points within specified time frames. The proposal is similar in concept to a suspension by the Department of Motor Vehicles of a driver's license when a motorist accumulates a total of 11 points in moving violations within 18 months. Points would remain on the person's license history for a period of time determined by the seriousness of the drug. Based upon how many points have accumulated, a licensee would be subjected to a minimum mandatory penalty enhancement of 30, 60, 180, or 365 days. This rulemaking is recommended nationally by the Association of Racing Commissioners International, and the concept has been widely supported by other non-governmental entities, including the New York Racing Association, the Jockey Club, and the New York Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association. Staff recommends proposal of this rulemaking. Rob, are there any questions uh, relative to this proposal? Okay, I would entertain a motion to propose uh, the rule regarding equine doping, multiple violator minimum penalties. So motion. Sure. Motion has been made. Seconded. Sure. Thank you. Uh, any Can I just ask about the comment period? Discussion? Sure. sure. Once. Uh, you authorize the proposal. We submit the text and associated documents to the regulatory review unit in the executive uh, branch. And once we get clearance for that, it gets published in the state register. And then once published in the state register, it would open up a 45-day comment period. Thank you, Ed. Any other discussion on the motion? It's been made and seconded. OK. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Our next uh, item on our agenda, we turn to adjudications. And the commission has six hearing officer reports for consideration today. And uh, Mr. Williams will outline the first case. In the matter of Charlie Amaro, Finger Lakes 55, 2014. The state steward at Finger Lakes Racetrack suspended jockey Charlie Amaro for 10 days for interfering with another horse during the eighth race on September 20th, 2014 in violation of Commission Rule 4035.2. Following Mr. Amaro's appeal, a hearing was conducted on October 23, 2014. A hearing officer report and recommendation was delivered on December 10th. It recommended that the suspension be upheld. At a meeting conducted pursuant to the judicial or quasi-judicial proceedings exemption of the New York Public Officers Law, Section 108.1, the Commission considered this matter. The Commission uh, duly deliberated and considered this matter and determined upon a unanimous vote uh, to sustain the hearing officer's report and recommendations. Next. In the matter of Charlie Amaro, Finger Lakes 67, 2014, the state steward at Finger Lakes Racetrack suspended jockey Charlie Amaro for 10 days for interfering with another horse during the fourth race on October 24, 2014, in violation of Commission Rule 4035.2. Following Mr. Amaro's appeal, a hearing was conducted on November 14, 2014. <clears throat> a hearing officer report and recommendation, delivered on December 11, 2014, recommended that the suspension be upheld. At a meeting conducted pursuant to the judicial or quasi-judicial proceedings exemption of the New York Public Officers Law Section 108.1, the Commission considered this matter. The Commission duly deliberated and considered this matter and determined upon a unanimous vote to sustain the hearing officer's report and recommendations. Next. In the matter of Jose Baez, the state steward at Finger Lakes Racetrack suspended jockey Jose Baez for 10 days for interfering with another horse during the second race on July 21, 2014, in violation of Commission Rule 4035.2. Following Mr. Baez's appeal, 
A hearing was conducted on August 20th, 2014. A hearing officer report and recommendation delivered to the Commission Secretary on December 10th, 2014, recommended that the suspension be upheld. At a meeting conducted pursuant to the judicial or quasi-judicial proceedings exemption of the New York Public Officers Law, Section 108.1, the Commission considered this matter. The Commission duly deliberated and considered this matter and determined upon a unanimous vote to sustain the hearing officer's report and recommendations. Next. In the matter of disqualification of Always For You, on August 24, 2013, the stewards at Finger Lakes Racetrack disqualified the horse Always For You following a riding foul in violation of Commission Rule 4035.2D. Always For You finished seventh in the race, or finished the race, seventh race in first place, but was placed fifth by the judges pursuant to Rule 4039.20. Luis Gutierrez, the owner of Always For You, appealed the disqualification. At a hearing, Commission Council moved to dismiss the appeal on the grounds that the disqualification decision was within the discretion of the stewards. Such factual judgments of the stewards are not the proper subject of an appeal and that there were no genuine issues of material fact to be determined by a hearing concerning a mistake of law, ministerial error, or fraud. The hearing officer report and recommendation was delivered to the Commission Secretary on December 10, 2014. The hearing officer recommended that the Commission construe Commission Council's motion as a motion for summary judgment, grant the motion, and sustain the steward's placement decision. At a meeting conducted pursuant to the judicial or quasi-judicial proceedings exemption of New York Public Officers Law, Section 108.1, the Commission considered this matter. The Commission duly deliberated and considered this matter. It determined upon a unanimous vote to sustain the hearing officer's report and recommendations. Next case. In the matter of the disqualification of kisses and kicks. On May 28, 2014, the judges at Buffalo Raceway disqualified the horse kicks, kisses and kisses, kicks for interference and violation of commission rule 4117.4E. Kisses and kicks finished the ninth race in fourth place, but was placed sixth by the judges pursuant to rule 4117.12a. David P. McKnight, Jr., the owner and trainer of Kisses and Kicks, appealed the decision. At a hearing, Commission Council moved to dismiss the appeal on the grounds that the judges' placement decisions are not appealable as a matter of law except for fraud, material mistake of fact, or mistake of law, and that there were no genuine issues of fact to be determined. The hearing officer report and recommendation was delivered to the Commission Secretary on December 12, 2014. The hearing officer recommended that the Commission construe the Commission Council's motion as a motion for summary judgment, grant the motion, and sustain the steward's, I'm sorry, the judge's placement decision. At a meeting conducted pursuant to the judicial or quasi-judicial proceedings exemption of the New York Public Officers Law, Section 108.1, the Commission considered this matter. And the Commission duly deliberated and considered this matter and determined upon a unanimous vote to sustain the hearing officer's report and recommendations. Next. In the matter of Pedro Rodriguez, on September 23, 2014, the state steward at Finger Lakes Racetrack suspended jockey Pedro Rodriguez for seven days for interfering with another horse during the eighth race in violation of Commission Rule 4035.2. Following Mr. Rodriguez's appeal, a hearing was conducted on October 23, 2014. The hearing officer's report and recommendation was delivered to the Commission Secretary on December 10, 2014. The hearing officer recommended that the suspension be upheld. At a meeting conducted pursuant to the judicial or quasi-judicial proceedings exemption of the New York Public Officers Law, Section 108.1, the Commission considered this matter. The Commission duly deliberated and considered this matter and determined upon a unanimous vote to sustain the hearing officer's report and recommendation. Okay, we now next turn on our agenda to any new business or old business. Does anyone have any new business to consider? Uh, just one item, uh, Mr. Chairman. In the course of our discussions regarding the adjudications, it appears that due to the 
the limited scope of our view of placement decisions that in, in the absence of fraud that the, it is really unnecessary to provide for an appeal of a placement decision and I would recommend that uh, we do a proposed rule change to uh, implement that change. Any other discussion on this as new business? So, Mr. Williams, do you have that before you? Thank you. We will, we will undertake a review of that and get something for the next meeting. Thank you. Any old business to consider? Uh, anything else? Well, next, all right, for scheduling our next meeting, uh, given that our meeting concludes um, our calendar year, 2014, um, unless anyway, Jeff, I suggest that we maintain the present schedule of our meetings on the fourth Monday of every month. This would bring our next meeting for, to January 26, 2015. Obviously, we'd appreciate your guidance and to uh, Ms. Buckley of your availability, but maintaining a regularized schedule seems best for planning uh, purposes. So, this concludes our published agenda. Do any commissioners have any other items for consideration? Hearing none, this meeting of New York State's Gaming Commission is adjourned, and I wish everyone happy holidays. Thank you for joining us.